Hi, Les from Retired and Living the Dream. Today's video is going to be about 60 years old, no retirement fund, no savings, what can I do? And it's never too late to be able to do something about it. And I'm going to give you some ways where you can save up and still have a good retirement life. And I'm going to explain how you can make your retirement okay. So I'm going to wash the car, so as you can see, by washing the car it's going to be a long video. <coughs> so here we go. You are 55 stroke, maybe 60 years old, and for various reasons you haven't got anything saved up for your pension. And what you're going to do, because pension lasts a long time. And you're 55 to 60 years old, Let's say you're going to retire at, I'll give two examples, 60 years old and 65 years old, when the normal pension kicks in with regard to in England, the state pension or America, they have their own pensions and same with Australia. It's at 66 usually, but you can retire before then with my methods where I'm going to suggest and say. Uh, now this isn't for everybody, this is for those people that are willing to do something. They were not sat there at the bar thinking, woe is me, what am I going to do? And where am I going to find a money tree? These money trees don't exist. So this video is about for those people who are willing to do something. Let's face it, you only have to try and do something for five years. You've worked all your life, maybe 35, 40 years, so working another five years to be able to provide for your pension isn't a lot to ask, is it? And with my few suggestions that I'm going to say, there's ways and means of doing it. Now I think outside of the box and I run, I run a life coach business. And I tell people and help people how to move on with their lives with all sorts of things, with divorce, with retirement, moving to overseas such as Thailand where we are now and I've helped many many people save thousands and thousands of baht by thinking out the box and this is what I used to do when I worked in the fire service I worked for various organisations teaching young people with no skills, qualifications or education moving them on to either further education or in, in some cases jobs. So these were the hard to reach people with regard to making suggestions and helping them move on with their life. And this is what I've done sort of all of my life. So now I've sort of started up my own little business, been a life coach as well as running my channel Retired and Living the Dream. So if anybody wants a session, I do an hour session face to face dealing with any problems that you may have and I charge $20 and at the end of that one hour session if you are not happy with the, with the advice and suggestions and methods I've suggested I'll give you $20 back. So really speaking you can't lose from that can you? And I've got to say, I've been doing this for years, so I know what I'm talking about. I've been through divorce, I've been through bankruptcy, I've retired at 50 years old, I've travelled around the world, I've worked and lived in many places for free. I'm a mind of information, so that's why I started my life coach business up as well, because I, I like to pass on the information. So I digress. So getting back on to the, what you can do to retire. Now I'm going to tell you a story first. This story is about me on um, one of my examples of thinking out of the box. Because I was a firefighter in the UK, it was every situation that you went to was different. And we had a set of tools such as on the fire engine and the equipment, specialist equipment that we had within the fire service. And everything and anything we went to, we had to deal with, with that equipment and that's all we had. So you can imagine, we can't just turn up somewhere and say, oh, we can't do that, we can't deal with that. There's a solution to absolutely every problem. Some solutions are better than others, 
and some solutions may not work, but there's a, a way of doing everything in life. And that's how I look upon every, everything that happens in life is for a reason. And there's a reason why it happened and there's a reason how we can fix things. And there's a way on how we can fix things. Maybe it's not always the best way, as far as you're concerned, but there's ways and means of doing it. And I'll give you this example of when I was younger. And this is sort of where it all started from. When I was a young man, married, had a couple of kids, and my wife didn't want to work anymore. Typical wives never want to work, do they? And I sort of didn't want her to work either because I didn't want my kids to be what's called latchkey kids where the, the mum wasn't at home. So financially wise, we took a hit because my wife, we used to have two salaries coming in and now we only have one. And this is where I started doing other things because to make some money. And this is where I found my little muddy tree. And in life, sometimes when you do something, you find your little own muddy tree. And I'm gonna tell you about my little muddy tree and uh, how it grew into a big muddy tree. So, we were having a birthday party for my eldest daughter who was only five years old at the time. And um, so we hired a bouncy castle. We hired a bouncy castle and we had the party and I looked at this and I'm thinking, I paid 40 pounds for this, 40 pounds for this bouncy castle for a day. And I'm thinking, look at all the fun my kids have had with all the neighbors and things like that. And out of the 20 kids that came, Three other mums booked the Bouncy Castle because the kids had such a good time. So that got my old mind thinking, okay, there's a supply and demand for these. And like as I say, by that guy coming to my house with the Bouncy Castle, he got another three or four other people renting the Bouncy Castle. So we were short of money and I put it to my wife. I said, listen, I said, we need to do something to try and earn a little bit of money. So how about we buy a bouncy castle and we rent it out. We'll just buy one. And it was 380 pounds for this bouncy castle that we bought. And my wife, she never ever wanted to take risks with anything. And she looked upon it as a risk it's 380 pounds that we didn't have. So I sort of overruled her and I said, well, we have to do something. You're not working. I'm prepared to put the extra hours in and work and do what's required to earn some money. So we bought it on the credit card, Bouncy Castle. And I remember the day it came, all excited, my kids, and we put the bouncy castle up and it was a nice basic bouncy castle but it was nice so of course noisy motorbikes so of course all the kids in the in the road came having a good time and then when the neighbors came to pick up the kids i got two bookings for the bouncy castle and that was on the first day that we'd we bought it. So it was like, oh yeah, yeah, we'll do that. And then the phone never stopped ringing. We put an advert in the paper. We only had one bouncy castle. And the phone never stopped ringing for wanting to rent a bouncy castle. So I said to my wife then, I said, I'm gonna buy another one. No, 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 she said, we, we can't afford, we can't afford another one. I said, listen, I said, the phone's red hot. People are wanting it. So thinking, because that was the summer months, and in the winter time, we'd not be able to get a bouncy castle 
outside because of the, the weather. So I sat there thinking what size would go into a house. And it was a basically a 10 foot by 10 foot bouncy castle. And I got one made that would just go in the, the average living room or dining room. 10 foot by 10 foot. And in the winter months, it was out every weekend. People's houses. So I had a dry bouncy castle. Happy kids with the bouncy castle because it was in the house. And uh, so then my wife then seen that it worked. And then it was like, okay then. So she was happy counting the money. So then I applied for a, a spot on a, 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 like a park, a playground. A big playground or a big park area where we lived. And I paid a fee to be able to go there every, every weekend. And that money tree just grew and grew from that on. So consequently, when, when we bought another bouncy castle and a bigger bouncy castle, and one that had, that had bits and pieces on it, so it looked totally different to the bounty, normal bouncy castles. And uh, invariably, some kids will bump into each other, and mums and dads weren't very happy when little Johnny or Sarah banged their heads and were crying. So I had some little punch ball balloons, blew the balloons up, and uh, it's amazing that a punch ball balloon will stop a tear within a couple of seconds of them giving it this, uh, this balloon. So then, because the other kids on the bouncy castle seen these kids getting a balloon, they wanted a balloon. So while I had the 10 kids on the bouncy castle, I was blowing the balloons up. So then 10 kids come off the thing and it was 50 pence at the time for a, a balloon. So there I had another 10, 10 kids with, with balloons. And as the other kids came on, blowing the balloons up. And it's just like ka-ching, wow. So I was earning the money from the bouncy castle, from the balloons. And then I asked the parks department if I could do face painting whilst I was there. And they said, it's your little spot, Les, you paying for that amount of area. You can do whatever you want. I can't draw, a matchstick man. I can't draw, I'm terrible at drawing. But I thought, okay, I'm gonna go learn face painting. So I went and learnt face painting, thinking, I'll never be able to do this. But I did. And I started face painting. So I paid somebody to run the bouncy castle, pump up the balloons, and I was doing face painting. I had a queue a mile long. In the good weekends, I had a queue a mile long, and I never stopped face painting. Charging a pound each all day for a good eight, eight hours a day. And it took five minutes per face paint to do. So I know the story is going on, but there's, the moral of the story is thinking out the box and thinking what else you can do. So it was face painting. So I'm thinking, what else could I do? Temporary tattoos. So I got some temporary tattoos. And I was charging a pound for a, a temporary tattoo, and a temporary tattoo can be done in a minute. So now instead of five minutes to do face painting, which I still offered to do, I was doing temporary tattoos and face painting. So then my mind was still going on, what else can I do? And I've seen a couple of videos, cuts and scars. Kids love cuts and scars and gory stuff. So I learned how to do cuts and scars, like a great big cut or a broken bone or a big scar on your arm. Took five minutes, but I charged £2.50. 
for a cut and a scar. And these kids were walking around as if it was a, a real genuine cut and scar. So the moral of the story is, is that when you discover something, you can always build on it. So from that original birthday party for my five-year-old daughter having a having a bouncy castle, I start my own children's entertainment business up. And I had seven bouncy castles, a gyroscope. I did face paint and temporary tattoos, cuts and scars. I did children's magic. I had an unrideable bike. It just went on and on and on. So that's what I did with regard to building a little business up from nothing because we needed some money. Now getting back onto retirement, what can you do? Now you're 55 or 60 year old. You've got a mountain of knowledge that you can part on other people. Again, I, I've got a mountain of knowledge by doing all the things that I've done in all of the years through my career. As a firefighter, I worked for the probation service, I worked for the Prince's Trust, so I gained an awful lot of information. And I'll just get a towel. And so moving on to help you. You are 55, 60 year old with no savings, so what can you do? You think outside of the box, that's what you have to do. So thinking outside of the box, what can you do? Well, if you've got no money or little money, there are many reasons why people have uh, got no money with a pension, and it's usually through divorce or lost the house and things like that. Things you can do to earn some money for the next five years. So let's say you're going to retire in five years' time and you've got no money and you're waiting to draw your pension, but you want to retire early, maybe it's let's say five years before you can draw your, your pension, then you know that's guaranteed money. So how can you retire five years early and what can you do to get that? Now I'm going to make some suggestions and some people are going to poo-poo the idea and say, oh, 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 I'm not going to do it, that's never going to work. But from little acorns, big things can be achieved. So what can you do to earn money? That's simple to do and everybody wants what you're going to be doing. And let's start off with plants. Plants, if you sell $20 worth of plants a week, which isn't hard to do, easy to grow, they basically look after themselves, all you need to do is water them, all you need to do is propagate them, then my wife does, you'll see some plants, I'll put some pictures of plants up. And my wife started off with a few plants, although she doesn't sell the plants, she grows them herself. There are many people here who grow plants and sell them and make an income of it. So $20, $20 a week is not an awful lot of money to, to make, is it? So your $20 a month, what else can you do? Lettuces, tomatoes, peppercorns, uh, bell peppers, and there's another $20 a week. So that's easy. And that's growing from home. You're not working anywhere else. You're doing everything if you've got a garden, obviously. So you can make a little bit of money doing that. And why would people buy your produce as opposed to buying at the supermarket? Well, I'm sure you've got plenty of friends and family in that. And they know it's properly organically grown with no pesticides or no, no chemicals involved with this because you've grown them. And probably people would be better off to buy it from you than buy it from anywhere else. If you've got friends in restaurants, you can sell them to restaurants. So now that's 300, uh, well, $20 a week is about $1,040 a year. So three of them, 
invariably you live in a, in a house, so do you need to live in that house? Can you move and downsize? Because after all, you're looking at five years before you retire. So you can move down if you want. If you're preparing for retirement, you're going to have lots and lots of things that you don't require when you retire. I sold absolutely everything when I lived from when I lived in England. I have nothing at all in England. But it took me three or four years to sell everything because there were some things I didn't want to get rid of and it's like, no, no, that's, that's good memories. But if you haven't used anything for four or five years, the chances are you're never ever going to use it either. So downsize. Move to a cheaper apartment, move to a cheaper house. If you own your own house, if you retire, you can rent it out and that's going to give you a good income every month. Or, if you're living on your own and divorce, and let's face it, most people are at our age, at my age, 55 and 60 year old, and that, that's probably why they haven't got no pension because they've got divorce and things like that. Now what you can do is rent a room out, or it, by renting a room out, it's going to give you an income every month. So all of these little streams all add up. It's just like you get your own money tree and you're growing your own money because you're actually doing something about it. And for those people who really, really want to get stuck into this, um, my last year before I retired, I lived in a shared house. So I moved from the flat that I was living, living in, so I had all the gas, the electricity, rates to pay, and I moved into a, a rented, or a, not a rented, a shared house where we just shared everything. And I was living in one room with a couple of suitcases, but I knew six or seven months later down the line, I ain't going to be there anymore. So drinking coffee, if you have your Starbucks coffee, buy a cheap coffee machine. This coffee machine here, is a couple of thousand baht, 40 quid, something like that. And the coffees it makes are beautiful. There are many, many, many ways. If you want to retire and you want to have some money, you need to do something about it. You need to make the, the changes. You need to have a plan. And let's face it, you've worked for 35 years and you've got nothing left. So why not work hard for the next five years and enjoy your retirement? With a few little things that I've just said there, you can have maybe 30, between 33 and 36 thousand dollars saved up in five years. Now I live in Thailand and I retired in Thailand, and I do a video for living on a thousand dollars a month. So 33 to 36 thousand dollars, that's virtually three years of living for five years of working a little bit extra, three or four hours a day extra. Now, isn't that worth it? Than sitting on your backside and doing nothing and saying, woe is me. If you're a go-getter and you, you, you want to get there, you can get there. But if you just want to sit on your bar stool or you want to sit, watch your Netflix TV and do nothing about it, well, then nobody's going to come and knock on your door and give you the key to your happiness. Let's face it, you could live another 30 or 40 years after retirement. So do you want to live that amount of time without not being happy? Even when you're retired, you can make money. And again, that's another video. But if you want a private session talking with me on a face-to-face -face and you can ask me any questions, and like I say, if you're not happy with the result after an hour, I'll give you $20 back if you're not happy. I can make suggestions and solutions to absolutely anything and everything. And it's a way forward. Sometimes you need that person with that out of the box thinking to be able to help you along. Because sometimes you get tunnel vision and you can't see a way out. There's a solution to absolutely everything in life. So from Les, retired and living the dream, a bit of a different video today. Till the next video, bye for now.